Hey there, everyone. I hope that you're having a great day. Just wanted to come in today and just kind of share what's on my heart with regard to the word of God. And so uh, I am excited that you are joining me as I just kind of go through the scripture and um, pray. So Heavenly Father, we bless you so much for this day. We bless you, Father, for your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for how you speak to us and how you invite us, O oh Lord, to learn more about your heart and your plan for our lives. God, we thank you that we are people, which means that we were created on purpose. And so, Lord, bless this broadcast so that we can see what you see what it is that you desire to show us in our time together in Jesus name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Janine Hammond. And I just kind of wanted to go through today. Um, what does it mean to process Christianity? And being someone who has uh, been walking with the Lord and figuring it out as I go, because guys, the manual is the word of God. And it is designed for each individual person, which is amazing. It is not unbox fit all kind of a journey. And so when we realize that and recognize that, God is the one who stays the same, right? Who he is does not change according to the world's definition, according to the times, according to the age, according to what's going on, according to the trend, God stays the same. And I can remember being a young person, not really understanding the depth of that. And I was, I was pretty upset that God did not change. Uh, and I, I'm sure that was a part of me that was rebelling, that wanted to do my own thing. And I just couldn't understand, Lord, why don't you change? Change is good. And it's not until you get older and you begin to have a perspective for life that you realize God is my firm foundation. God is my stabilizer. As it says, God is my refuge. He's my strength. He's what I can always go to. I can always bank on that. Amen. God bless the time that is going to come for those who may not experience that. My Lord, that's a whole different uh, talk. But today I just wanted to talk about the word of God and, um, as it relates to the altar, as it relates to the armor of God. Yes, the altar being consecrated unto the Lord, but I also wanted to talk, really focus in on the armor of God, okay? So take a little moment to do that. So I was just thinking about what's going on around us and the increasingness of that. And um, there's a scripture that talks about the dense darkness, right? Arise and shine for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And, you know, understanding how to navigate the dense darkness because it's here. And we are in a time where we're just seeing things left and right that are uh, disturbing. And so how do you begin to process your walk with the Lord in the midst of what you see, in the midst of what you hear? And um, the beauty is that God has given us his word and the word does not change, meaning that God does not change. He doesn't adapt to the culture, um, but he can speak into the culture life, right? And so I just wanted to read um, Ephesians 6, which is a very familiar passage to most of us, um, but it's talking about the armor of God. And I'm going to read this a little bit from the, I have the new KJV, but I also have the uh, NLT version, which I thought was really interesting because I took some notes on that. So it says here, starting at verse uh, 10, it says, the whole armor of God, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in the power and in his mighty power, this translation says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. So what we read here is that when I get in, when I'm when I'm in the Lord, I can, I can be strong. When I'm in the Lord, I can experience his mighty power. So it's one and the same. The Lord and his mighty power is one and the same. Verse 11 says, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. So I love this because it is reminding me that there's not one thing that comes at me 
There's not one opposition that happens in my journey of life that God has not given me an armor that, that can stand against all of that, all of those strategies. There's a scripture that also talks about we are not ignorant to the, of the devices of the adversary. And so it's so good and so encouraging that that is, that's awesome. That there's not one thing that can come at me that the Lord says, this armor that I've given you, it, it is uh, indestructible. You can stand firm against any strategy of the enemy. And it also says that God is wise. God is way smarter, right? But we have to recognize that. We have to walk in the revelation of that. So put on all God's armor means I have to put it on, right? Which means can I put it off, right? I have to put it on, which means that I have to be mindful that I do have an armor and that I do have access to something that um, can work for my good. What we love about the Lord is that he's the defender of our lives. He's the defender of your life. You know, we're not, we don't have to feel like we're just out here in the world swimming and trying to figure it out. God's like, I have a plan. And if you would recognize that I have a plan, then guess what? It will speak into every aspect of your life. Isn't that encouraging? So it says, put on all, not part of it, not half of it, not some of it right? Put on all of God's armor so that I'll be able to stand firm, right? So if my heart is failing me, if I'm weary, if I'm weak, then it's possible that I've not put on all of the armor of God, right? Right? Because God says that I'm able to stand firm. So if I'm, if I'm feeling a little shaky, then I've got to get back to the armor of God. And we're going to get into that a little bit more so that I can stand against, stand firm against the all the, the strategies of the devil, all the strategies of the devil, which means that God has thought about everything, everything before I would ever face it. There's another scripture that talks about the Holy Spirit can show us the things that are to come. Amen. And so it is important that we have eyes to see and we have ears to hear. What does that mean? God, what is it that you're showing me? God, what is it that I'm hearing and how do I process that with you? How do I process being a believer? How do I process being a Christian when it seems like I'm opposed or uh, I have to deal with situations that are not, not always favorable, right? So that's one thing we have to recognize that in this walk with the Lord, that there are going to be things that try to diminish my faith. There are things that, that's going to come to try and deconstruct what I believe. But when you have an experience with the Lord, come on, when you have an experience with the Lord, there, there aren't many things that can come against that, right? So I don't just have a church service or a message on the library, you know, in the library of my life, but I actually have an experience. And within that experience, I have an encounter with the Lord. So more than anything, I want to be able to encounter the Lord so that I have experience. If I'm going to be an expert at anything, I need to be an expert at my relationship with the Lord, how he speaks to me, how he shows me things, how he leads me in my life so that I can interact with other people and I can be a demonstrator of light and mercy and grace and the goodness of God, which is the goal of the Father. Amen. Now, here's, here's something that's really key. So listen to this part, <laughs> really stood out. It says, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. Come on. How many times do we try to fight it out with people? How many times do we like, oh, I, I have something to say, you know, and we get a little attitude about it. And we're like, hear me, da, 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 da. And we're fighting against something, flesh and blood, whether it's a person in your family, whether it's a friend, whether it's a coworker, whether it's a boss, whatever it is, we're fighting against flesh and blood. But God is reminding us through the word here, verse 12, Ephesians 6, that we're not fighting against flesh and blood. There is something behind that. And we're going to talk about that. It says that we are, talk, we are fighting against principalities. Well, that is the New King James 
version or translation. Let me just look at the NLT, the New Living Translation, because I like the way it broke that down. It says, but against evil rulers and authorities, right? That's number one when I'm fighting against. So it's not the flesh and blood. It's not the person, okay? No matter how familiar I may be with that person, something can get triggered, right? So there's something underneath that, something that I don't see. And it talks a little bit further down in the verse that there's an unseen world. You know, here's the thing. I think that we have been so conditioned in the world to um, leave the mystical and the unseen realm to horror movies, right? Like, oh, that's the unseen, that's not real. So maybe like, oh, I don't believe in the devil. Well, who's behind that? Who's behind some of those things that we see? I mean, it's straight up darkness, straight up evil, right? So God have mercy on the ones who say, I don't believe because that's the enemy's job to make sure that we doubt his existence. But we read through the word of God, even Jesus was tempted and there was a cycle of temptation that was by the adversary. Well, it's the same adversary, the same devil that hates God who's here today, right? Who's, who is after the people of God, who wants to pursue us, who comes in like a roaring lion. And we can be encouraged because he's like a roaring lion, but he is not the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. So it says we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We have to remember that. But against evil rulers, evil, evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Wow. That's, that seems like a lot. It seems like there's a lot against us, right? It says, um, mighty powers in this dark world, evil spirits in heavenly places, okay? The KJV talks about principalities, right? And we know that even in our cities, right, there are principalities, there's rulers. So think about this. When we think about the jurisdiction of uh, law enforcement, right, whatever county, whatever city you're in, those people are there to enforce a particular justice, right? The laws of the land, right? They are there to enforce that, you know, for the benefit, hopefully, of the people. Well, that's the goal, right? It's for the benefit of the people to enforce good, to serve, to protect, and to serve. And so when we think about this from that perspective, God has a kingdom. God has a purpose, God has a plan, but then the enemy also has a kingdom. He also has a plan. So guess what? Uh, the enemy has his imps, right, in position to try and enforce darkness, to enforce evil, where God has his plan to enforce light, right, to enforce the goodness of God. And guess what, y'all? We we're caught in the middle. But if we are listeners of the word of God, and we, if we are hearers of the word of God, then we understand that we have a source of hope. We have a source of help. We have a source of strength. And we can find comfort and assurance in that, knowing that there's not one thing that, that we would face that the Lord hasn't already given us an answer for, right? It says all strategies of the devil. God has provided a way for us to be firm, to stand firm, and to walk in his goodness. Amen. Isn't that awesome? So it says, verse 13, it says, therefore, put on every piece, every piece of God's armor. Don't leave a piece out, kind of like a piece of cake, <laughs> like a piece of pie, right? You're like, I'm not going to leave it. I'm not going to leave a piece, right? I want a piece of that. I want a piece of that, I want a piece of that, I want a piece of pizza, I want a piece of that, right? So God's like every piece, right? So, so we need to have that desire to make sure that we, we get every piece of what it is that the Lord has laid out for us, right? It says God has prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. He has anointed our head with oil and our cup runs over, amen? Amen. So every piece, right? God has prepared something for us. 
And because he took time to be thoughtful about preparing that, then wow, wow, we know that there's a lot of intention. And there's a lot of love in that. To know that God thought about us and that he prepared that for us. So every piece. So it's not a duty. It's not something I have to do. It's something that I am invited to because the Lord has been mindful of me. Isn't that beautiful? So put on every piece of God's armor so that, son, so that, daughter, you can resist the enemy so that you are strong enough to resist the enemy. It says in the time of evil. And then after the battle, that part got me because there was a time when it was like, man, if I just do good and I just serve God and la la la, then I'll never enter a battle. But that is not true because we've heard it. We live in a fallen world, right? And the enemy has his hook in some of us, if not all of us, right? Seeds of our past, seeds of our journey. So something's going to happen, right? Where you're going to find yourself in a battle. But we remember that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places, which is the KJV version, right? That's the version I grew up on. So it says, then after the battle, you will stand. You will still be standing. Isn't that a word? You will still be standing. The enemy may come in to try and knock you down, to try to take you out. But the Lord says with the armor of God, that as, as I put on every piece of God's armor, I will be able to resist, hallelujah, the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be able to stand firm. Hallelujah. That is a moment to praise the Lord. Come on. The battle is the Lord's. Hallelujah. And sometimes we find ourselves in a battleground. We find ourselves battling. But we remember that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty through God for the pulling down of every stronghold, every stronghold, not some, but every. Amen. Hallelujah. So it says in verse 14, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. Wow. That's deep. The belt of truth. Like if I don't have truth, then I have no stability. If I don't have truth, I have no balance. I'm all over the place. I'm being tossed by winds of doctrine. And y'all, it's changing all the time. They're rewriting history, rewriting things so that we can have a different belief system. Come on. But God's like, truth is truth. And Jesus said, the truth will set you what? free. Hallelujah. So we are able to walk in the freedom of the Lord. Amen. So it says, stand your ground. How? When you put on the belt of truth, right? Right. Your waist. I think about your loins. I think about, you know, that's the thing that holds you up, right? That's the thing that holds you up, holds you together, right? That is like the center of your being, your waist, right? So that needs to be truth. I need to have truth in my belly. I need to not only just have truth in my head, a verse, but that needs to be saturated. That needs to be a part of my being. That needs to be in my belly. I need to have digested the word of God so that it's in me. Hallelujah. So the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness not my righteousness, which the word says is as filthy rags, right? What I think, what I want, what my rights are, are totally different than what God has in mind. It says that his thoughts are higher than my thoughts. His ways are higher than my ways. And amen for that. It doesn't always feel right to not be right. But guess what? I'm not dictated by my feelings. I'm dictated by the word of God, which is my truth, which is my foundation, which is my stability. And so sometimes I may have to get out of my feelings and do what thus says the Lord. Amen. So the righteousness of God, which is God's way of doing, God's way of thinking. Remember, we talked about he's, he's 
immovable. He's the stability of our lives. Amen. And so isn't that good to know that God changes not? Like, I, like when you just really think about that, like he can be trusted, right? I was thinking about this uh, the other day about a chair. I, it it kind of got on the chair and reached for something. And just a quick thought was like, what if that chair collapsed? I was like, oh my Lord, you know? We don't think about a chair collapsing. We don't think about that. We think we can stand on the chair. We can sit on the chair. No matter, you know, who we are, what size we are, how, 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 what, right? We, we, we believe that that chair is going to sustain us. So God's like, I will sustain you just like that. Better than that, right? So just remembering that the Lord can be trusted, Right? That he's not going to leave us hanging. He's not going to fall apart. He's not falling apart now. He's saying, get in my mind. Get in, get in my thoughts, the thoughts that I have for you. You can get in what it is that I have for you. Because I've thought of you. I've considered you. Amen. So it's verse 15. As we come to a close, it says, for shoes. It's talking about the shoes. Put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. Ever been someone and you're like, I'm not prepared. <laughs> well, this is not the time and the day that we don't wanna be prepared. So how do I, how do I prepare myself? I put on the whole armor of God, right? It's all of those things. And the armor of God is found in the word of God, right? And in the word of God, I learn how to pray. I learn how to seek God. I learn how to position myself before the Lord. And I learn to invite him into every situation of my life, regardless of what that is. God wants to be a part of it, right? So the peace of God, so that I am, that comes from the good news. Not the bad news, y'all. <laughs> not the other news. Not, not somebody else's news, but the good news, amen? And so today I just wanted to come and I just wanted to share that with you to put on the full armor of God so that you are able to stand. And it's not only a word to you, but it's a word to me, right? To us as the body of Christ that we would walk in sync with the Lord. God has something for us to accomplish. He has a plan through our lives. You are purpose. I am purpose, amen? We were created with intentionality. And God is saying, there's something that I have designed to be fulfilled through your life, through your agreement with me. And the only way that's going to happen is that you put on the whole armor of God and that you're able to walk in faith, right? Knowing that everything that comes, God has already made a way of escape for us. Amen. So I want to pray with you before we go. So Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this time. I thank you for your word. Father, your word lasts. Amen. Your word, Father Lord, it is good and it is pleasant to us like a honeycomb in the name of Jesus, right? Father, we just thank you for your word that we can taste and see that you are good. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father Lord, that it's your goodness that you allow us to experience through your word. It is good that we would see your heart for us. It is good that we would be able to come into fellowship with you. It is good that we would learn, Father Lord, that you have been thinking of us and that you are thinking of us now. So Father God, I pray that this word in this time would remind us that we have an armor. Hallelujah. And it's an armor that is our strongest weapon against the adversary, that we are not warring against flesh and blood, against people. So I don't need to speak. We don't need to speak against people. We do need to understand in wisdom when you're calling us to hold people accountable. But Father Lord, we're not going to be intruders into conversations that we don't need to have. Amen. But we're going to remember, Father, that we can pray and that we can walk in peace because of the good news of the gospel in Jesus name. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. It's been great being here with you today. Again, I'm Janine Hammond, and I hope that you would subscribe and follow me as I follow Jesus. Amen. So God bless you. Be well. Amen.